What is up, everybody? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to budget tubing. And more specifically, shoestring budget tubing, where I talk about content creation gear in the $10 and under price range. And I've got to admit, I did not expect to be reviewing another microphone from Five Below so soon in this series. Because as I mentioned in the first episode, this mini-series was actually inspired by an item from Five Below. Specifically, the Booga LED gaming microphone, because while it is just $10, it's absolutely terrible. And it really has no reason to be, as illustrated by another microphone Five Below carries, that being the Pulse desktop microphone, which they only charge $5 for. And it's actually pretty decent. Also, as of the recording of this video, all three of these microphones are currently for sale, though only the Booga microphone is available on their website. The USB microphone, as well as the Pulse, are only available in stores. Now, before I dig into the microphone proper, let's take a moment to talk about this packaging, because, let's face it, it is very understated. In all honesty, if it wasn't for the fact that they foil embossed the name of the product on the packaging, I would have completely missed out on this. Fortunately, they do also have a nice popping white print on the side here, which while not as eye-catching as the foil embossed version on the front, still does stand out a bit. Oh, and before I start talking about the back of the box, I've just gotta say one thing about the front here. And that's this list of buzzwords, because we have podcasting, blogging, live streaming, gaming, recording, meeting, social media, and pop filter. One of these things is not like the others. I just thought that was kind of funny. Another interesting point is here on the other side, because they actually put hashtag five below on the box, and even included the logos of all of the different social media that they're active on. While that might not be a first, it is definitely one of the first times I've encountered this on one of their tech products. In fact, if we flip over here on the back, you will see it says that this product is distributed by 1616 Holdings, which is what is emblazoned on all of the different store brand products from Five Below. However, for all of their influencer slash content creation focused gear, they'll use the brand tracks, as you can see on this six inch studio ring light. However, if I show you the bottom here, it is indeed distributed by 1616 Holdings. I just thought that was kind of interesting. They want you to know that this microphone came from their store and that has me thinking they might have more stuff like this planned in the not too distant future. And if that's the case, I have quite a long wish list of content creation related items that I would love to see in their stores that I think would sell well. And one prime example would be an HDMI capture card, kind of like this five to $10 model I reviewed last time. In this package, you receive the microphone itself, a shock mount, a tripod, a pop filter, as well as a pop filter holder. Now, as for the specs of this microphone, according to the manual, it has a sensitivity of negative 30 decibels, plus or minus three decibels, an impedance of less than or equal to 2.2 kilo ohms, a cable length of 1.6 meters, and a frequency response range between 50 hertz and 16 kilohertz. Also not mentioned in the manual is the fact that this is an omnidirectional microphone. I know this because a, it is hinted at on the box, it calls it 360 degrees sound receiving, and B, I've seen this microphone sold under multiple names over the years, and each of those has also been omnidirectional. Some examples that come to mind are the now discontinued Toner Gaming Microphone, as well as the Trust GXT 232 Mantis Streaming Microphone that's currently on sale in Europe and Central America. I should also note that both of those microphones come in at well over $10. In fact, the Trust version is currently selling for 28 British pounds, or just a couple dollars shy of 40 bucks. And that fact makes me wonder how similar the hardware is on this little $10 microphone. Because as I mentioned in the first episode of Shoestring Budget Tubing, the Booga LED gaming microphone is basically a shell clone of the G55 gaming microphone, but with inferior internals. With that out of the way, let's talk about assembling this kit because the manual does not exactly do a great job of it. It has a bit of a how to draw an owl feel. 
So to get things started, let's go ahead and take this out of the way and bring in the shock mount and tripod. First thing we need to do is screw the tripod into the base of the shock mount, which is threaded at 5 eighths of an inch, as is the standard for most microphone equipment. And I'm thankful for that because that means that this is compatible with things like microphone stands and boom arms, unlike the stand that came with the pulse mic. This is a solid piece, which means you're not going to be connecting at least this microphone clip to a boom arm. However, the profile of this mic does mean it is compatible with most generic microphone holders on the market, so you're fine there. Next up, run the microphone's USB cable through the rubber bands on your shock mount. And I should go ahead and point out that this is easier if you uncoil the USB cable first. And once you have the cable all the way through, just go ahead and run the microphone between the rubber bands and you're set. For those of you wondering what the heck a shock mount is, well, it is a mount for your microphone that is meant to absorb shocks. AKA, every time you bump the cable, this is going to allow the microphone to bounce around freely without rattling, and so you're not really going to pick up as many of those sounds as you normally would. Next up, we need to install the metal rod that is going to hold our pop filter. And to do that, first loosen this thumb screw, and then run the metal rod through a hole in the front, then a hole in the brass fitting, and finally another hole in the back of the shock mount. You can then tighten the thumb screw in order to hold everything in place. Last but not least, we need to install the pop filter, and you do that by running the threaded end of the metal rod through the threaded hole on the base of the pop filter. Of course, the threads are added to the base of the pop filter using a metal insert, so you're not guaranteed to have the pop filter aligned properly if you tighten it all the way down. That's why there is a nut included on the metal rod. Also, for those of you who are confused at home as to what the heck a pop filter is, this is a little guard that sits in front of the microphone that keeps you from breathing too heavily on it when you say certain letters like P and T. If you don't have a pop filter in the way, you're going to have a small gust of wind hit your microphone, and that's going to cause a pop, or what is known as a plosive. And I'm very happy that Five Below actually included a pop filter in this kit, because there is a disturbing number of content creators that don't use them. And once you know what a plosive sounds like, you're going to hear them everywhere, including on channels with millions upon millions of subscribers. And admittedly, that's a bit of a pet peeve of mine because I've become a bit obsessed with audio quality thanks to making all of these videos. And so every time I hear a plosive on a video I'm watching, my eye twitches just a little bit. Side note, this is not a pop filter. This is a wind guard. It keeps light breezes from affecting your audio quality, but it cannot always stop plosives. Remember that. All of that ranting out of the way, I just want to point out that this pop filter, when used with this microphone, is kind of pointless. And let me show you why. Alright, so the reason why I say this pop filter setup isn't going to make much of a difference is due to the way this microphone is designed internally. As you can see, the mesh on the mic is actually sitting on the side instead of going to the end like it does on the pulse mic. And that means that this is more than likely a side address microphone, whereas the pulse is an end address microphone. That basically just means you're going to be speaking directly at this part of the mic as opposed to the butt end here. And in fact, I can prove that by taking this little light and sticking it behind the mic. And I don't know if you can see it on the video feed, but I do see it in my viewfinder. The capsule is set up in such a way that it's pointing this way. Kind of like this capsule that I took out of a BM800. Though, I should also point out that the capsule inside of this mic is nowhere near as large as the one from the BM800, which is a 16mm capsule. Instead, I think this USB microphone is using something closer to this, which is a 10mm capsule. Now, of course, I did mention that this is an omnidirectional microphone, which means speaking to the side, the front, the back, or even this end, if you're so inclined, really doesn't make a difference on the audio pickup. In fact, I tested that myself off camera, 
and no matter which direction I pointed this mic, everything sounded the same. But plosives don't care about the directionality of a mic. They only really happen when a puff of air hits directly on the diaphragm, like this. And so, even with an omnidirectional microphone, you want the pop filter right around here. But sadly, this pop filter is kind of in a fixed position here at the end of the mic. Now, of course, I'm not saying this will have zero effect on your audio quality, because if you have everything set up in the orientation from earlier, and you're speaking into the end here, you will prevent plosives from going around the end and smacking the capsule. It's just to a more limited degree. So it's better than nothing. Ideally, what the manufacturer should have done is use a setup similar to this one right here that's being used with the Toner TC777, where instead of using a fixed metal arm to hold the pop filter, it goes with a proper gooseneck, allowing you to adjust it no matter where the capsule is on your microphone. But of course, that setup does cost a little bit more than the one included with this mic, and I don't know what kind of profit margins the manufacturer and distributor are working with. Enough of rambling about pop filters, let's go on to the audio tests. All right, let's start these audio samples off with the Buga LED gaming microphone so that we can see where this all started off as well as where it's going. I'm currently about one foot away from the microphone capsule and I'm having to project quite a bit in order to be picked up at negative 12 to negative six decibels, despite the fact that I have my recording volume set to 100%. As for my audio quality, well, this microphone is locked at 32 kilohertz 16-bit, also known as FM radio quality, and there is a persistent whine at around negative 36 decibels, which you've probably been hearing this whole time, but it's more noticeable when I'm quiet, like so. And if I were to get about four inches or so away from the microphone, I'd sound a little something like this. Thanks to something known as the proximity effect, I get a bit of a warmer pickup, and I don't have to project as much to get my audio to the same volume. And back to one foot away from the microphone, which is around where most people are going to be using it. Now, let's switch over to the Pulse microphone. And here I am on the Pulse mic. Once again, I'm about one foot away from the microphone. I'm projecting just a little bit in order to get my voice in the negative 12 to negative six decibel range. And I have it plugged into my laptop's sound card, which I have set to 48 kilohertz 16 bit, also known as DVD quality audio, but I can actually change that to quite a few different things. I'm just not going to go any higher due to the fact that I record all of my videos at 48 kilohertz 16 bit. I should also point out that with this being an analog microphone, the audio quality will change depending on the device you have it plugged into, which puts it at an advantage and disadvantage against USB microphones, depending on the quality of your USB mic. Once again, here I am about four inches or so away from the microphone, which is fortunately easy to pull off due to the fact that this microphone is compatible with multiple kinds of mounts, even if the stand it comes with isn't. So this mic is a prime candidate for boom arms. And back to one foot away from the mic. Now let's round things out with the new USB mic from Five Below. Last but not least, we have the creatively named USB microphone. Once again, I'm starting things out at about one foot or so away from the microphone. I've got my recording volume set to maximum to make sure I'm in my negative 12 to negative six decibel target range. And I have my audio quality set to 48 kilohertz 16 bit, AKA, DVD quality audio. Now you've probably already noticed there's a little bit of background noise on this microphone, but unlike the Buga microphone, it's not a squeal. Instead, it's just a little bit of white noise that can easily be taken out using noise removal without really negatively affecting my audio quality. This is something you're going to have with most USB microphones. And as per usual, here I am about four inches or so away from the microphone, which I should point out is extremely easy to accomplish with this microphone in particular, due to the fact that its mount is compatible with things like microphone stands and boom arms, which means I'm gonna lose even less quality during noise removal. And there you have it. Now, while this microphone did outperform the Booga mic, no surprise there, it didn't quite sound as good as the Pulse microphone. 
But then again, like I keep saying, the Pulse is an analog microphone, which means your audio quality is going to be affected by whatever you have it plugged into, and that puts me at a bit of an advantage due to all of the random audio gear that I have. I should also point out, with this being a USB microphone, it's going to be a bit more user-friendly than the Pulse here. After uploading that video, I've received quite a few comments asking how exactly one is supposed to hook this up to their computer. And looking back on it, that does make sense, due to the fact that a not insignificant number of people are using a computer that has moved away from the more traditional to audio port setup. If you're wondering what I mean, well, here's an example. This little USB audio card has one dedicated port for a microphone and then one dedicated port for a set of headphones. Whereas many devices today have moved towards something more akin to what's on cell phones, where you just have one port that is used for both headphones and a microphone, which uses a four pole connector like this one, also known as TRRS, whereas the Pulse is only equipped with a three pole connector, also known as a TRS. Fortunately, they do make combo audio adapters like this one, which will cost you between one to five dollars, depending on where you get it and it splits the headphone jack away from the microphone jack. Coincidentally, that's also the kind of adapter that is included with the Booga gaming headset, though not the Yuyusei gaming headset. That one's actually the opposite. So yeah, like I said, USB microphones are more user-friendly than analog microphones for most people. And because of that, I have to give the new USB microphone the win here, especially with all of the additional goodies that it comes with, even if the pop filter's almost useless. Not quite, but almost. And with all that being said, this is definitely worth the $10 price tag. And thanks to the passable audio quality, this would not be the worst microphone to use when gaming or even when starting out a YouTube channel. So you may want to look into noise removal or a noise gate. Now I just have to keep hoping that 5 Below is indeed going to keep introducing content creation gear like this in their new black box or hashtag 5 Below or whatever they want to call it line. Seriously, give it a brand name. Tracks would have been fine. But you know what? I'm not going to critique it that much if they're going to keep coming out with stuff like this, especially if we're going to see something like maybe a uh, $10 boom arm putting that out there. I mean, they do have similar items for cell phones, so you never know. But I think I've rambled on long enough, so until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.